Entertainment Network, your number one source of information, education, and entertainment. For honest, responsible, and dependable information, we stand supreme. To stay focused, inspired, and relaxed, choose green. Ekabo and welcome to the traditional herbal health discussion program. Our host today, as usual, is Coach Ian T. But before we go into the program, I would like to read today's essay, Ifa. Today's essay, Ifa, comes from Odi Iwori. It reads, If Eshu tries to distort the world, it is Ila who resists him. Ila does not receive a reward. Ila does not receive cola nuts. Ila encourages human happiness and creates long life. He made Odundun the king of leaves. He made the ocean the king of waters. He made the lagoon its priest. Ila is good and pure as Sese beads. The radiating one, clear as a shooting star, he who prays constantly. Okay, I share, and that is the essay IFA for today's program. All right, I am now going to turn you over to the host of the program, Coach Ianti, and she would tell us what is today's topic. All right, and after she does this, we are going to look at a brief video before we get into the discussion for today's show. <laughs> Alafia, welcome back to season two of the traditional herbal discussion on the Grassroots Education Entertainment Network. I am Coach Ian T, a friendly co-host streaming from the friendly island of St. Martin, doctor of naturopathy and indigenous healing, traditional therapies by profession. So, um, our team is dedicated to share our traditional herbal heritage with the rest of the Caribbean diaspora on in our various area of expertise and um, this afternoon's topic is going to be a response to a request from a viewer who asks us what steps should I follow if I want to undertake a complete detox. So we are going to look at it from um, an ethno-medicine point of view and I'm going to present to you three different approaches so that you could choose the best, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the one that is the more efficient or the one that is more easily approachable for your lifestyle. Okay, so the first stage, most people follow a three-stage approach to the detoxification. The first stage involves preparation where you will need to prepare your body by eating a simple, clean diet and drinking sufficient amount of water in order to help cleanse your gut. And once this is done, you can fine tune your digestive process by eating healthy and especially non congesting fresh food or broth. In the, last, in the last phase, you can start by slowly reintroducing other healthy food. But make sure you continue to avoid the intake of milk, alcohol, meat, and excess sugar um, throughout your entire program. That is while you are detoxing and even post detoxification. Right, so if that was a this is a very simple way of figuring it out the three step process. But if it was that simple to get an effective body detox, then what is it that we always recommend that you should consult your doctor or a naturopath? Okay, so the professional holistic approach will target an effective body cleanse as per body system, and that's what we are going to look into this afternoon. Um, so we work in terms of body system detoxification. So in today's presentation, we are going to speak more from a general conception 
Um, however, keep in mind that there are many other different conceptions, different holistic approaches of the human body. So a quick example, the tantric approach to healing the body is done through the concept of energy channels, and uh, which have the particular centers of concentration along a line in the center of the body that we call chakras. Today, everybody know what's a chakra. Everybody look about grounding the chakra or you know getting uh, the chakras and block. And this is the tantric concept of releasing energy throughout your body in order to balance out your life force. In a traditional Chinese model, for example, the emphasis is on the dynamic principle of the yin and the yang as being paramount for ensuring your health. In Ayurveda, the approach is to the seven datos, which are plasma, blood, muscle, fat, bone, bone marrow, and reproductive fluid. Okay, so um, before we get into the various um, explanation, I selected a little video that's going to give you uh, the Ayurvedic uh, explanation of the different body systems so that you would have a visual of how we approach your body detoxification. Okay. So, hand it over to Baba. Okay, yeah, that was a very interesting video. But I know so little about the Ayurveda system that I wouldn't even attempt to interrupt your Hello, presentation or to, um, to present you. or to get into anything as such. But I mean, you know, I'm going to follow you real carefully and whatever I don't understand, I would try to ask questions so that I could get a better understanding of it. At your service. So with this video, I wanted to give you guys a visual of a definition of the different body systems. So um, different people will um, approach a detox, a detox diet, a cleanse, whatever word you want to give it for different purposes. Sometimes you may do so because uh, you're congested, you have difficulty breathing, you may be suffering from asthma or any other uh, nasal congestion. Uh, maybe it is that you're having difficulty with your digestive system, you have difficulty going off, or maybe you have, uh, maybe you suffer from an irritable bowel syndrome, so therefore you're going too often to liquid. Uh, it may be that you have poor circulation, uh, whatever approach, but we all think about it through a detox. And so therefore, you would maybe call someone who is a little knowledgeable with the herbs and say, I need a detox. But then you could just give you like a one size fit all detox. But with this video, I just wanted to show you that a one size fit all detox is technically like a cleanse. It just gives you like a wash, but you do not get the total body detox unless you approach it um, system by system. So um, this afternoon, we are going to work from uh, the perspective of 10 body system. So slightly different from the Ayurvedic point of view. So uh, we can define the body system as a group of organs and tissues that work together to perform important jobs for the body. So they are the organs in our body, which are part of uh, more than one body system and they serve the more than one function. Apart from this, other organs and tissue serve only one purpose in the body system. All body systems are necessary for an organism to be able to survive and reproduce. So below, um, we're gonna talk about how our organs and tissues work together to accomplish the task. So let's speak from our perspective of 10 major body systems as follows. The first one is the territory system. The second one would fall as digestive system or excretory system. Third one, cardiovascular or circulatory system. The fourth one, renal system or urinary system. The fifth, endocrine system. Sixth, nervous system. Seven, musculoskeletal system. Eighth, integumentary system or exocrine system the ninth lymphatic system or immune system, and the 10th reproductive system. So um, it works more or less in this area where you must start with your breath, because your breath is your life force. The minute you stop breathing, that's it. You are transitioning. 
So therefore, uh, we may not always think about needing to uh, detox our respiratory system. But remember that there are so many poor ones all around us. We breathe any type of toxin day in, day out, every day, especially for those of us who are always under the air condition or electric heater, or even in front of the fan. Because if you look at the fan, the fan gathers a lot of dust. So we are forever inhaling a lot of um, toxins. So if you think about um, a bloody box, oh, I need to cleanse my blood. If you look at the order of the different body system, before you could cleanse your blood, you have so many other systems to first clear before you could achieve a blood cleanse. So just using herbs that are going to target your blood cleanse, it's still not going to give you an effective uh, work unless you approach it in the right order. Because, uh, for example, your liver can be placed in your head and your head can be placed in your feet. This is the way we were created. So therefore, we got to follow the order of the body from you know, the crown to the toes. So let's speak about the respiratory system. So it executes the gas exchange between the cells and um, the respiratory system takes oxygen from the environment and is going to convert it into a form that the cell can use. So in humans, it means that our lungs take in oxygen and rapidly diffuse it into the blood. So the lungs accomplish its function by passing large amount of blood of the gas exchange and membrane. And that's the body's whole blood volume passing over this membrane as uh, how many ounces per minute, you know? So without this oxygen to, fill, to fuel cellular respiration, um, the cells, the body cells start to die within minutes. So as you know, um, if you have ever witnessed someone transitioning um, after the last breath, it's really a matter of seconds before the entire body release everything and it's the end. Okay, so because of this, we have to understand that the respiratory system is one of the body's most important system. So therefore, for example, experiencing nasal congestion and just taking a pill and feel like you're breathing clear and leave it like that is the, the worst mistake we could think about. So when we think about a detox, the first thing we should want to detox definitely is the respiratory, the respiratory system. Let's look into the second system which is our digestive system. So in this system, we take food and we break it down into usable nutrients. And then we're supposed to execute solid waste product. And I would like to insist on solid because I know that many people sometimes uh, may, especially nowadays because of the transformed food that we eat by transform I mean process, uh, many people experience uh, disorders whereas they go, um, they execute completely liquid. But it's not supposed to be completely liquid. It's supposed to be um, solid. So um, the carbohydrates, the protein, the fat, all of those are, that we use, they are all going to be used by the cell as sources of energy so that they, they will use what they need to stay alive. Now, what happens when we eat in excess? So when we have excess of carbohydrate, excess of protein, excess of fat, excess of sugar, et cetera, it is just... Uh, technically, it's as if you just sweep it over to the next system. But can the next system make use of it? Here is the problem. So the next system is the cardiovascular or circulatory system. And this one is, um, you know, it's focused on moving material between body systems. So that includes the oxygen, the nutrient, hormones, and the waste product. Meaning that if you have a poor circulatory system, uh, you're going to have a challenged heart, challenged arteries in terms of clogging, and also your veins are going to suffer. And eventually, people who are having poor circulation also suffer from uh, either um, high blood pressure and other physical uh, symptoms. Okay, so this one is... Um, it's very important because it sends the messages that cause the whole body to prepare for fight or flight. The fourth system is the renal or urinary system. So this one dissolves the waste product from the blood and excrete them. So it could include the kidneys and the bladder. 
and all blood is passed to the kidneys where a special filter allow dangerous substances to pass out from the bloodstream while keeping helpful substances in. So the waste liquid that is filtered out by the kidneys is stored in the bladder and sealed the body, expelled it. So indeed, you will notice that when you are uh, detoxing your body, your feelings are supposed to be clearer and clearer. Some of us have put more or less clear urine because we drink a lot of fluids. Okay. But whenever you know your body is more or less balanced, not only the urine is going to be clear, but also it's not going to have a false scent. It's not going to be burning. It's not going to be stinging. There's not going to be any itchy. It means that the body is functioning properly and your detox has been effective. We're going to speak also about the fifth system, which is the induction system. And this system sends the great chemical signal that all over the body is tend to act um, in cooperation. So those messages, they have their own unique purpose to which the body's other system respond accordingly. So this may include uh, hormone producing tissue uh, for the pineal gland, um, including the P pituitary gland, like I show my English film on this one, but the thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, and the pancreas, as well as the ovaries and testicles. Some examples of the messages sent by the endocrine system are fight or flight, reproductive signal, to feel hungry or to feel full. Let's talk about the nervous system, because we will think about all of this, but it is true sometimes that if you are going to breathe, if you are maybe um, very um, stressed out, if you're having an issue with falling asleep, etc., all of these fall into your nervous system. And we do not think about it all the time, but um, when, we, when we hosted the show with Dr. Ake, he did emphasize that uh, whenever we are experiencing stress, changing the diet is one of the first steps that we should consider toward an holistic approach to managing our stress. So the nervous system it allows perception, emotion, thoughts, a rapid response also to the environment. It includes the brain, the nerves. Um, it allows it allows us it allows us to um, respond to various stimuli like light, sound, smell, touch, etc., from the environment, and also it allows us to have a rapid communication of the various stimuli within the body. So I'm talking about sensation like pain, um, illness, wellness, happiness, and uh, the nervous system accomplishes all of these using specialized cells called neurons. So they can transmit signals extremely fast by firing electrochemical potential. So by this, I have been speaking about two. What happens when the nervous system is exhausted? You're going to feel lethargic, meaning... You can see that you have something that needs to be done, but you feel like, well, today I can't go. You know, you would want, like, you would see something happening in front of you and you want to react. But yet, you feel like, you know, you don't have it together to have the reaction that you want. You could probably visualize it. You know what you want to do, but your body is not moving. It means that your body is facing exhaustion. Therefore, a detox is needed in order to release it from the overall congestion. And uh, the seventh system is the uh, musculoskeletal system. So this one is all of the body to move on command. So uh, the system of muscles throughout the organism operates to move the organism and also to stimulate the internal organs. So uh, there are several types of muscles, huh? like smooth muscles, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, etc. And um, the, the, the various formations of muscle, it helps us to create an opposing force. So the opposing force is what a lot of the limbs to move. You find sometimes that people have gone through an illness and the body is so exhausted that they can't move and they have to remain bedridden. Or even sometimes your doctor or your herbalist, and actually whoever is a woody sickness practitioner, might recommend bed rest you know, as a uh, social form of uh, recovery. And uh, we're getting into the eighth system that is exocrine system. So this system 
uh, of the body, it regulates the exchange with the outside world. So this comprises the skin, the hair, the nails, as well as the sweat glands, other glands as well, which uh, put the substance onto the skin. So you realize that this is also very important to take into consideration. Very often when people suffer for acne or other type of breakout, everybody, I, I want a cream, I want a serum to fix it. But you gotta understand that it's more than just fixing something onto your skin, because if your skin is breaking out, it means that it needs cleansing. And by just facing something over, it's not working. You know, you're, you're not getting into the body. You have to work from within. So we um, do soap space according to which type of soap we use. So we have to understand that uh, cheaper is not the best. That's very important to understand because a cheap soap means that it's full of chemicals and therefore your skin at some point need um, need a good detox. When I was younger and we would uh, travel to the island for vacation, one of the first things my grandmother used to do, whether we would go to the river, whether we would go to the sea, she would sit us at uh, she would sit us on the on the sand and she would take the sand and she would scrub us from the neck all the way down. We never used to understand what that meant. And we used to feel like she used to take advantage of the fact that you know we came from abroad and we don't know anything and we used to feel like a fool. But on the contrary, it was something very wise because it was a strong stimulation to open all the pores of the body naturally. And then we went into the sea. So into the sea now, the open pores would be in contact with saline water and other minerals found in sea water. And here just by this, you just feel fresh, you would feel uh, invigorated. Okay, you would play the whole day, you could dance the whole day, you would eat the whole day, and then at the end of the beach day, you would get the best sleep ever. And as simple as this, we don't realize that those are steps to cleansing the body. And you don't have to spend money for this. This is something you can do for yourself, just by driving down to the sea. Um, I know that some of our viewers are watching us from um, you know, Europe or in the States, so maybe you are not able to, to drive to the sea, but you can achieve the same by using um, other grain, uh, by using a little sponge, by using a punic fern, etc. But you know, as we develop the topics, we will feel free to you know, give you examples, details by detail. Another system we want to focus on when we talk is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is what's going to deal with our immunity directly. So the system fights infection, and um, because uh, the lymphatic system, the lymphatic vessels permeate the overall body. So every living thing needs to be able to fight infection. Uh, we have white blood cells that can specifically target and destroy invading pathogens. And these white blood cells, they are made in our bone marrow and they are stored not only in the blood, but especially in the lymphatic system. Remember that the lymphatic system is what's going to bring everything, it's going to move everything through the body, including to bring nutrients and all toxins as well back into the bloodstream. So we would always think about a blood plants. But we have to understand that before we think about cleansing the blood, we want to especially focus on cleansing the lymph first, because the lymph is going to feed the blood. And last but not least, the reproductive system. So uh, it's interesting that even in Ayurveda, when it is spoken as um, seven, body seven body tissue, the last one is always your reproductive system. So there will be time maybe where men and women, and especially at different stages of life, we experience um, imbalance, sexual imbalances. Sometimes it also happens when we are tired, or when the body is not so healthy, maybe we put on a lot of weight, or maybe uh, out of the room being complicated for quite a while. But we feel like this is not going to affect another body system. But we have to understand that to have the best performance or to, to enjoy the best um uh the the, 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 best, the best mindset or you know to, to make the, the the most of a sexual experience all the other systems that are placed above the sexual organ organs have to be balanced and so therefore um taking a pill just to make it happen is really just making things more complicated 
because you are just pushing stimulants towards the congestion body. And technically, according to the approach that I have to tell this afternoon, technically, you'll be pushing stimulants to nine other systems before it arrives the destination. So are you truly doing yourself a favor? It is the same when people sometimes are going to to use um, lubricants. Okay, the body is supposed to be lubricated and naturally. All right, and so it is always um, making it more complicated to the body to use a chemical to, you know, to, to interfere with the natural balance, especially when you come to your reproductive system, because you are jamming all the other systems just to get to that particular one. But if you keep a holistic mindset, you want to remember again that you are not just one body part you are not just one system we are you know uh definitely exactly you know it, it's like the body is uh, a set of system put together and they work with each other and they keep each other in balance okay so um you know the the last system reproduction well of course it includes the ovaries uterus mammary glands the penis the testes and um, it, is, uh, it is essential for the survival of the species. So, you know, like sometimes of agreement, uh, we suffer from all manners of imbalances in terms of fibroids, uh, uh, ovary cysts, whatever you call it. And even in the, the lot of women, so I've lost a lot of people to breast cancer as well. Um, when, when you think about a breast cancer, the last thing that's going to come to your mind is, you know what, first, let me start detoxing my respiratory system. Because you're going to feel like, I can still breathe. This time has nothing to do with my breast, or this doesn't have anything to do with my ovaries. But again, I insist, you know, that we are uh, an overall system comprised of different, you know, um, individual body system that work together as a whole, not individually. So um we thank to the, the viewer what asked um about two or three weeks ago, what could be a good detox? Well a good detox is one that's going to approach your body step by step, stage by stage. Okay. And to allow you so you can understand that three days detox is not going to cut it. I have to understand that on the market, people are going to advertise anything they want to advertise in order to convince you to use a particular brand, to use a particular system. And this afternoon, um, I, I, I made it a point not to recommend anything in particular uh, because it's not a matter of competing one herb versus another. It's not a matter of competing one product over the other. Doing it properly means you're doing it step by step and you're giving your body the time it needs. For example, I might only need um, seven days to get my respiratory system cleansed. Why do I say seven days? Usually, the first three days of your detox is about emptying all what you stored in your stomach and colon. That's the first three days. So technically, okay. your detox starts at day four. Before I'm saying one finger, this one. Okay. Now you have to understand that some people have some huge guts. Uh, some people have been constipated for a long time, and it may actually take them a little more than three days because three days is the average to just, you know, get out of the bowl, you know, get rid of the bowl. Okay. So it's like once you've done with getting rid of the bowl, then you are cleansing the first body system, and you have to go step by step. And this may work um, a little faster or take a little longer uh, in different individuals. All right, but yeah, I have a question though. Sure. All right, because um, I would sell a detox medicine, like a, a, a what we call in Trinidad a purge. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all call it that too. Yes, that's and, a um, <laughs> Right. What I've noticed is that depending on which you just mentioned by the way when a person have a big gut when yeah. a person has a certain body weight yeah. it would appear that the medicine that would work for a person who carry an average body weight mm -hmm. the purge would work very good with them 
But mm -hmm. a person who crosses 200 pounds or, or on the border of 100 pounds. I'm really glad of that. <laughs> yeah, you would find they would drink that entire purge mm -hmm. and they wouldn't even have a movement. And they would complain and tell you that your blend is not working. Yes, I've had that. I've had it. I've had it. So, you know, what I've discovered with that is depending on the body weight of a person, mm -hmm. the dose that they would have to take would have to be a lot more. I mean, if you're, if you're carrying the body weight at two persons, then it's obvious one person's purge wouldn't work for a person that weight. So then that person would need to take double the dose in order for it to be effective. Let me react about that. Uh, this makes perfect sense. Just that sometimes the person who carry the body weight of two or three people, uh, their life force cannot even sustain a double dose. And so therefore, this is when therapy steps in. So this is where sometimes you need to go and get, um, you know, some traditional therapy. I'm going to stick to what I, you know, my, my area of expertise. And that's where, like, in um, in India, we call that panchakarma, but there are several other, wor uh, other words. Is it, is, it, is it the enema you're talking about? Not just no? the enema. The panchakarma technically are detox treatment based on traditional therapies where you would have, like, a special detox to start clearing your respiratory system, so from your nose, because maybe, you know, the detox alone, the blend is not going to be sufficient, so therefore you're going to want to assist the body. So instead of maybe doubling or tripling the dose and probably uh, challenge somebody who probably already have issue with their heart and palpitation, because another thing I notice is that when the people reach to certain stages, they know, for example, that they're having palpitation. You're going to ask them, do you suffer palpitation? No, I'm good. Are you sometimes experiencing shortness of breath? No, I'm good. Now, when they take the syrup or they take the, the elixir, Two days after, oh, my blood pressure went up. I couldn't take it. I couldn't breathe. But however, uh, if you if you keep the dose the same, but you assist the body with those traditional therapies, then you get the result. You get better results. You get you help the body manually or even the machine because now we have technology for everything, and there's nothing wrong with including uh, a little bit of modern age into our traditional heritage. And uh, you help the body with those treatments to be balanced without uh, putting too much pressure from within by using too strong a dose of herbs. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, uh, this is the first time I've heard um, it put in the way that you have put it. But um, I do know that there are particular herbs mm -hmm. that would cleanse particular internal organs. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, the way I know it to be is that what you do when you're making these uh, detox and these cleansing medicines, what mm -hmm. you do is you try to put different ingredients that would actually affect different systems. But yes. as you have just explained, you mm -hmm. know, it's like a, 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 it has to be done in stages yes. so that there is a particular time to cleanse certain systems before you move on to cleansing the other systems. Yes. Well, I, you know, I, I always have a lot of examples. Today is December 12th, and um, last year on December 14th, a great friend of mine passed away. And uh, on the 12th, exactly last year, she woke up with, um, you know, like her breast was very stiff and she had um, palpitation and she was very worried because we had been battling with her health uh, for quite a while. And she told me, Ingrid, you have to come right away, right away. And based on what she explained, I worked with some uh, machines of mine to go and perform treatment at the home. Now, when I got there and I realized in what state of weakness she was, I was so happy that there was no current in the area. Because um, there are times when people are, when the suffering becomes too much, people panic and they want to see you do something for them. But sometimes the body is not strong enough, you know, whether for the herbs or whether for the treatment. And you always have to respect the body. And the reason why I was so grateful that um, there was no current is that I know she would have given her a serious tension to um, start the treatment on her because she, you know, of course she had a desire to feel better, but then Monday morning, that was it. Like, you know, it, the sun didn't even have time to rise when I got called and tell me, Ingrid, you know, 
that's it, she left us. And I told myself, wow, if there had been any current and she had managed to convince me to put her in that mission, I don't think she would have woken up from it because she was really weak when I saw the Saturday. So that's what I'm saying. It's like um, when it comes to doubling the dose, if you go to an expert, someone who know what they're doing, then you do so. But I would never advise people to double, triple their dose on their own at home because you never know what the outcome might be because at time we are not able to assess how much the body can take. It is your body, true. But even uh, myself as an expert, um, I went through uh, two years of physical recovery after an assault. And the first year, I was messing up my recovery altogether. Why? Because I was still upset with the desire to go and exercise. So I was not even able to perform 5% of what I used to do back then. But it was just an obsession for me to feel better mentally. But I just kept on dismounting the body over and over. And I just had to agree to just do it alone. And it was depressing because, oh, my God, I'm just, I'm, I'm putting on weight. But at the end of the day, it's like sometimes you just have to let the body um, heal at its own pace. And indeed, I, like, for me, I didn't think it would have taken two years, but it's like your mind feels sometimes that you can go a mile, two miles, three miles, but your body doesn't agree. And that also um, take us technically to what Dr. Akpe said a couple weeks ago. Uh, you could be 20 years old with a body of a 40 or 45 year old. Uh, because the body is exhausted, the defense system are uh, exhausted, they are congested, and therefore, uh, you know, the, we age a whole lot faster than time is passing through. Okay. Well, yeah, we have roughly five more minutes well, before the close of the show. Well, I'm covered for the topic, you know. I don't know if anybody sent any question, but um, if there's no question for today, um, that's fine. I just would like to encourage the viewers to um, send in your question. You could do so either by contacting Baba or by contacting me. And you can send us uh, Facebook messages, or I think there was a time when we had the, the numbers displayed as well. Feel free to send a number because uh, it helps us to discuss about topics that are there to you directly. So we are always going to come up with different topics and different speakers. But if you ask a specific question, this is always going to be our priority to discuss what you want to learn, uh, what you want to learn or to give you the additional information that you need. All right. Well, viewers, we thank you for taking the time off to join us on the traditional Herbal Health Discussion Show. And we ask that you like, share, as well as subscribe. And with that, we would like to say Oda Bo, and we will see you next week on traditional herbal health discussion. Oda Bo.